Hi there, and welcome back to my podcast. So this episode, we were doing the flip side of of everything, where I, I talk after. There was no talking before. And I just give a bit of background and some inspiration for how all this came together. So the visual that's being paired with, with the piece, which I'll talk about in a second, comes from a recent trip to Algonquin Park, a hiking trip with some friends. And we've been talking about it for a while to do this. And we finally got it done. And it it it, it was interesting for me to capture these. I'm not sure which one I, I is going to go in there, so I can't tell you which lake <laughs> because I have to review them still. The but they I on the trip I took a few long sun usually sunsets. I did I did one sunrise. I did two one sunrise, one sunset. I actually learned a lot about um, capturing long long video, which has sort of been a goal of mine for a while and and I've tried different things. And on the trip, all I was allowed to really bring, allowed based on weight, is my phone. And my phone happened to have... I freed up a lot of the space on the phone. So the phone actually works quite well. iPhone. for, for And this is actually... I have an older iPhone, and it still works pretty well for this purpose. And And you can even take it a step higher which is you you can use these battery packs they're actually they're actually very good right now the 10,000 whatever ones they're and you can hook that up and and you can record long video and not really worry about it running out so anyways the it put me in a bit of a weird pickle because it's a form of I'm cognizant of when you share like really good media clips from when you've gone away somewhere. It's a form of, it can be a form of like, this is the best place in the world and, and you didn't get to go here and FOMO and do induction. But I think in this case, my, if, if your intention is good and, and I, I do believe I, mine are good that the, um, just making sure, yeah, it's recording. <laughs> Always got to make sure it's recording. In the back of your mind, if it's not recording, you're like, damn it. Um, in this case, my intentions were, are very good. I think I'm, I'm sharing a bit of, of a place that is hard to get to. And this is the reason why I'm, I'm self-conscious about some of this stuff is, is that the, the way to get in there is, was not easy. It was, there was a lot of heavy hiking to get through and I had a heavy pack because I, I still don't have the lightest gear. So it's not like I just magically flew somewhere and, and took these videos. It was, it was, there was actually a lot of work involved and that's not really documented except for me saying it here and it just wasn't easy (laughs) i hadn't done that in a long time i find even even there's challenges even with car camping as well even though uh, hardcore people would kind of laugh but you know there there is a lot of work you're setting up your tent and everything so if you add on the the idea that you have to walk in to get to to your campsites And some of these were hour, you know, four hour long stretches. There was one day where they, um, we had to go through a thing called Mosquito Creek and you couldn't stop for many hours because the mosquitoes would eat you. And they definitely got me. I got a lot of bites and I didn't have you didn't have time to really even drink a lot of water. There was actually no extra water on the way. Uh, It was Creek. And then, so you had to limit your water and then no real time for food. So I I had to eat, I had some gel packs. I actually made use of those on that, that stretch. And it really pushes you to your maximum. 
and it's funny to go back to to city living where we we have a very short threshold for for when we give up and when we check google news that's my form of giving up <laughs> throw in the towel i'll check the news cuz the news is where nothing good happens hey, your your psychology just disappears when you do that and that's your my form of giving in but when you're stuck in the woods there's no giving in this is like you got to you got to power through and you're going to have to get to your your campsite and and you're going to need to yeah you have to just get everything done um my friends were very good about risk aversion and and you know if there was like um it's a balance between getting go, continuing on if you can and then but also like if rain's coming in we want to set up that tent or or they were very good with uh, throwing the food up into the tree so the bear bears don't get it and so yeah that that's where this this video clips come from and um it is sort of always on my goal list to to make sure I spend time in in nature i'm actually quite biased to the summer and i'd like to change that i'd like to to do more in the fall and the winter winter is tough though i mean we have a cold it's not very appealing to go outside here so um i think to do that in canada you would you would do stuff like snowshoeing cross country skiing i've wanted to get into for a while I just you need to get a bunch of gear i guess for that so maybe you could do cross country skiing with with a pack but again camping in winter is quite tough you you'd have, you need the sleeping bag has to be four seasons and and that's that sort of thing so the the the, the music itself uh, is is a piece that i have done in a studio form that i will probably release quite soon and it, it doesn't really have a name yet so i can't give that name um but the the impetus for it was i've been quite fighting with this keyboard here this is the lower one which is called the korg sv2 and i feel a little ashamed that i'm fighting with it because it's a it's a premium product and i'm pretty sure i i didn't get a defective one I did a lot of due diligence when I first got it, and I I was given a short window of time by the music store to exchange it, and I I made the call that it's not defective. But the issue that I have with it is is that it outputs quite a high noise floor, from what I can tell, and and I've done a lot of tests, and it and and so i've been battling with that and and i'll explain why that's relevant in a second the the keyboard on the top is my actual original synthesizer from when i was a teenager is called the roland xp10 multi timbral synthesizer and actually an older cousin of mine <coughs> excuse me an older cousin of mine took me to the music store when i was 14 or 15 and we with the same music store that I, I do all my uh, Long McQuaid I, I still do all my shopping there to this day and we they they kind of identified that this was the right keyboard and I was on a plan where I paid monthly for it and then that helped me buy it out so it was sort of like a finance rental thing and it was it was like the baby version of the larger X, XP line, which were very good um, all-arounders. So I hung on to it for a long time, but the screen was was dead, and it, w it really the L LCD screen was dead. And that if you if you can't read what's on the screen, you can get by, but you won't be able to get you won't you can't go very deep because you you can't really see any information about what's what the patch is so i actually recently i ordered a thing on ebay to help me replace the screen like a replacement and then 
uh, that sat around for a while. And then a few weeks ago, I, I, I did the work. I opened it up and I fixed the screen and <laughs> I wish I could show it here, <laughs> but the screen doesn't, isn't actually not the right. I don't think I was ripped off, but it wasn't, it definitely did not fit in the slot properly. So the screen is like kind of like, um, inwards and like crooked and but I can read what's in there and so now I can um, go in and make uh, edits or whatever I can really use the keyboard I mean one other feature the keyboard stopped working uh, maybe I broke something when I opened it up which is the MIDI in and out so that means this keyboard can cannot talk to anything <laughs> which is really frustrating because if it could it, if it could it could do a lot of cool stuff with some retro nineties sounds involving the arpeggiator, but it's so it's on its own. And then, um, down here is my analog -y synth, which is the Behringer model D, which is a ripoff of a Moog circuit. And it, it's like pretty phenomenal, but it's very controversial. A lot of people are disgusted with Behringer. I'm not because I get great sound out of this <laughs> synthesizer, but it bothers a lot of people. Um, you know, I think that, you know, for just a few hundred dollars, it it does something worth thousand thousands. Um, it, it, re it, it, it replicates original Moog Model E, I think was the, the thing, which is a three oscillators. And you you would hear it on a lot of my music. It it I've tried virtual things like um, software, and they don't they don't do anything. Um, I can actually I could even no no I can't get it. Into, I'm not gonna put it on right now. Um, but I've done software stuff, and they don't it doesn't hold a candle to this. So I mean, it needs to you need to tune it. That's it goes out of tune, um, and yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have the luxuries of the, everything else, um, in the, in the, the modern world. So just to tell you what, what's been happening. So I, 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 I wanted to just like, okay, this week I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to just work through this issue with the noise floor. Let's show you quickly. It's just, meh. I thought I, what's going on here? Um, I, I, I thought I was going to be able to show you the noise floor. Yeah, there it is. That's me cranking it. And it's there. So anyways, I went through today and I, um, I, uh, I mean, sorry, I went through this week and I just said, I'm going to sit down and do something. And I came up with this thing where I, I hit the, the you see these, the sustain pedals. I, I, in the, the performance I was just doing, I held down the perform. I held down the the sound so that's that's bottle blow from the XP10 and then on the on the core on the core I have an organ So you'd really call that a drone is really what's happening. But but what you can't see in the video is that my feet were holding down the pedals. <laughs> and and so that that adds like a physical challenge and then I had the guitar on me and then um because the guitar is on me I don't have as much access to the the synth See if I can get that on.
so this is a way of uh, doing this is a way of doing a live <laughs> performance without um, music <laughs> of of evolving sorts and you definitely would call this drone because I'm holding down a drone like ambient and drone is a lot of sustained notes but this is like taking it to the to the experimental level because the pedal <clears throat> the pedals are being held down and then and then um, so in the studio version of this piece which I've yet to be named but it kind of maybe is like a homage to Terry Riley who has the track called in C I think because this is C <laughs> these notes were all C um, which is not the most interesting key but it's the key C is the root of the keyboards you know they're kind of everything goes around the, the C so I um, uh, yeah it's a sort of my experimental piece and then in the studio version it's a bit more I'm not bound as much with by like I did the key I did these keyboards in, in one pass and then I did um, a pass of the Moog Mo, um, Moog emulation and then I did another pass of the guitar so it's more I'd say more cohesive but very similar to what you would have heard in the live version from this podcast so yeah and actually in the studio version I'm still deciding if you can hear if if I'll allow um, because to I actually fixed it on this version but in the studio version I do something like that when, when, when the track starts and you hear it and it's kind of funny to, to, it's an editorial decision to make because it's like, do I give away that you're hearing this or does it, or do you, you start to track, you move, you edit up a bit. And so that they just hear the, the soundscape start and they don't, they're not privy to the keyboard part. So, but the, the, the part about the noise I wanted to come back to before we wrap up here is, is that I just learned to, there it was, I'm just learning to like, let, let the noise in. <laughs> it's becoming a form of therapy in its own way. And, and in this track, I added the bottle blow, the bottle blow sound, which has noise in it. It's, it's an, it's a patch from the nineties of someone <laughs> blowing into a bottle um so i'm just trying to like make use of the noise and 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 i think it's an important skill to like okay like i have a premium keyboard i've always wanted a good keyboard i've had it for over a year and i think the noise issues have prevented me from really making any use of this this investment and yeah, so that's kind of so so I I would say to to sum it all up is like this is sometimes you have to just go go through it and you can't go around it. And and, and it's tempting to like say okay, I'm going to sell this thing and and not make use of it, but you can just take what you think is a bug and turn it into a feature. And that's that always goes to the the point of of making lemony <laughs> when life gives you lemons, which I don't want to ever say that in conjunction with with this types of equipment. Um, very grateful to to have to have this stuff, but it's it's along those lines. And I do think it's a skill to cultivate and to look for the 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 nuggets that are wrapped up in in problems that we, we face. So, and there's, there's a golden teacher behind every, every challenging situation. And I definitely could feel that from the, the hiking thing, you know, I learned a lot about persistence in just a a few days about trying to get through, trying to get through the challenging hikes. And I, I think I was grateful for, having been given what I think was quite out of my range for that, that time in my life, you know, 
um, just not used to, to hiking through long stretches and, and then you're like, uh huh, <laughs> this is teaching me persistence. And so, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much for listening and, um, coming along, hanging out in the studio and we will see you soon. See you next week. Okay. Take care now.